Good morning. Uh, today we're looking at coordinate geometry. All right? And we're actually focusing on two coordinate geometry. So hence we have a, an x-axis, which is a horizontal or flat axis. And we also have a y-axis, which is our vertical axis or upright axis. Now every coordinate or every point has two coordinates. Right? We know the x coordinate first followed by the y coordinate. So when we say b is at the point 5, 3, it means that b is at the point where x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3. Now to understand these coordinates a little better, let's go to the start. So here at the center, we call this a point of origin. All right, ground zero. At this point, the x coordinate is zero and the y coordinate is also zero. We can picture this like being in a building that has many floors above and below the ground floor. Now, everywhere along this x axis, we would still be on the ground floor. So the y coordinate everywhere along this line is always zero the, because that's the height so the y coordinate tells us how high or how low we are so we can picture the building having offices so at point one we can see that we're at the first office on the ground floor to the right of the center at this point we can see that we're at the fifth office to the right of the center but also on the ground floor. At the point B, we can see we're at the fifth office to the right of the center, but we're actually on the third floor because at this point, y is equal to three. If we're at a point where x is equal to one and y is equal to negative two, we can say that we are at the first office to the right of the center, but we are two levels below the ground floor, right? So the X coordinate measures the horizontal point and the Y axis measures the height or the vertical point. Now, there are some things that we need to calculate from these coordinates. And one, we should be able to be able to know characteristics of a line that joins two points. So here we have a line joining the points A and b we should be able to calculate how steep that line is we call that the gradient or slope of the line all right we should also be able to calculate length of the line and we should be able to find the middle of the line or the midpoint the coordinates of the midpoint of the line all right so let's get into it now gradient of a straight line we're saying, when we read, just like we're reading these words, we read from left to right. That's the same way how we read our graphs. So a positive gradient is a line that slopes upwards from left to right. A negative gradient is a gradient that slopes downwards from left to right. So this is like we're climbing uphill, positive gradient, and here we're going downhill, negative gradient. Now, another way of expressing the gradient or slope is saying that it is the rate of change of y, vertical distance, with respect to x. Right? So we can actually measure the rate of change of many variables in respect to another variable. The formula we use is stated here. So the first thing in coming up with this formula, and using this formula, is that we have to label one point as the first one and the other as a second. So let's say we make B our first point. It means that since this is our coordinate one for first set of coordinates, we're saying this would be X1 and this would be Y1. So this is the X coordinate for point one and the Y coordinate for point one. If this is point two, then it will be similar. But in our case, we actually made 
A.1 and B.2. So since this is point 0.2, we're saying this is x2, the x-coordinate for point 0.2, and this is y2, the y-coordinate for point 0.2. This is point 0.1, so this is x1, the x-coordinate for point 0.1, and this is y1, the y-coordinate for point 0.1. So we're saying x2 is equal to 5, and y2 is equal to 3 x1 is equal to 2 and y1 is equal to 1. So in our formula, the formula says the gradient is equal to rise over run, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So remember, y2 is equal to 3 and y1 is equal to 1. So 3 minus 1 gives 2. x2 is equal to 5 x1 is equal to 2. 5 minus 2 gives us 3. So we're saying the gradient of this line is 2 over 3. Interpretation, we're saying y increases by 2 over 3 for every unit increase in x. That means y will increase by 2 over 3 units every time x increases by 1 unit. Now remember, if the unit is centimeter, then we're saying y will be increasing by 2 over 3 centimeters for every time x increases by 1 centimeter. If it's mile, we're saying y increases by 2 thirds of a mile every time x increases by 1 mile. Now some facts about gradients. A perfect horizontal line, which is a flat line, and when it's flat we're saying it's parallel to the x-axis. So it's the same shape as the x-axis. It has a gradient of zero. And a perfectly vertical line has an infinite gradient. So that's calculating the gradient of the line. Next we look at calculate, calculating this length of a straight line. Right? So in calculating the length of a straight line, it's the same principle. We already identified our y2 and our y1, or x2 and our x1. So we just plug the figures in, y2 minus y1 all squared, plus x2 minus x1 all squared, and then find the square root of the result. Here we're saying square root of 13, whatever that works out to. We could have actually calculated it and put the decimal answer. Or the middle of a straight line. So for the midpoint of the straight line, we're saying... It's the average of the two x-coordinates and the average of the two y-coordinates. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. All right? So here we have an example with answers that you can try and see how well you understand what we just covered. All right? All the best. Have fun with maths.